Now at 6.30 on WKYT This Morning, schools are canceled, shelters are packed as this dangerous blast of cold air is settled into the bluegrass. And we're looking outside, sitting there above zero there for temperatures. Wind chills are a little bit below zero, but not a lot. We'll go over this extreme cold as we head throughout the weekend. Coming up. And why some students will be hitting the books despite being out of school today. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome to WKYT. It's good to have you with us Thursday, January 8th. A very cold start to the day. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome, welcome in. It is another first alert severe weather day. That's because the wind chills are at very dangerous levels this morning. Enough that most counties and other local districts have canceled school for today. That includes Fayette County and almost every other county that shares a border with Lexington and numerous others. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live now in our first alert weather center to let us in on how long this is going to stick around, Micah. Well, it looks like it's going to stick around for quite some time. We're sitting there at uh, one degree in Richmond, one in Mount Sterling, bad reading out of Lexington. We're actually just below zero uh, there for your wind chill, not double digits. Double digits are to the far north and northeastern zones. So you got to go up toward the areas that kind of uh, border that Ohio region and uh, well, let's call it a state. And uh, it, it gets really cold up toward the northern zones. Down toward the south, we're actually above zero, uh, right three to four degrees down in the southern zones for wind chill. So we're not even below zero down south. First alert defender live radar, no snow. That's always good news, right? 24 hour planner. We go through it and look, we'll have some sunshine today. Sunshine helps you mentally and physically outside when you're standing in it at 17 degrees. Yes, it'll be cold. Don't get me wrong. But it won't feel extremely, extremely cold. We were actually colder uh, last year around this time. So, yeah, it, it gets cold around here, but that's not even close to your record. I'll show you your record. We'll go over the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Micah. There are more than 70 school closings this morning, including here in Fayette County, where school leaders made the decision late last night. All right, they switched their decision. First, they were going to try to do it, but no school in Fayette County. And not everyone who's out of school today will actually have the day off. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber to explain to us live how some students will be having class at home. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Dozens and dozens of school districts here in Central Kentucky have canceled classes today. Fayette County, Scott County, Madison County, and, Je and Jessamine County, just to name a few, have all called off school. In all, close to 80 school districts here aren't having class today. Now, across the state today, for the first time, many school districts, including Jessamine County, will be starting their non traditional instruction classes for the first time this year, meaning students will complete assigned schoolwork from home using computer programs on the internet. When it gets in single digits, it's really difficult to have school kids standing out. And just a few minutes can be frostbitten, even when they're wrapped up pretty good. Now, as we heard just now, another example of just how dangerous this bitterly cold air is. So if you do have to head out today, please be prepared for this extreme cold. Now, as these cold temperatures are expected to stick through the next few days, we could see even more school closings later today and possibly tomorrow. For a list of all the delays and closings, head over to our website, WKYT.com, and click on the Closings tab. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Get in somewhere and get warm. And this is the coldest air, of course, that we've seen this season. With the wind chill well below zero this morning, emergency shelters in Lexington are overflowing with people. But the city says it can still offer people in need a warm and safe place to stay. Let's head out to WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell, continuing our weather team coverage live in Lexington to explain, and Jim, the effects certainly that uh, this intense cold can have on the body in a short period of time. Good morning. And good morning to you. And it doesn't take a lot of time, as uh, you heard in Mark's story there. It doesn't take a lot of time at all to be out in this. Just this type of uh, temperature range, you're talking anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes for any unexposed skin. That's when you can see frostbite. So just keep that in mind to keep everything you can covered. Like my face right now, it's miserable, okay? And just being straight up honest with you, it is very cold out here and dangerously cold at that. So there are numerous warnings, uh, warming centers that, that have opened up through central Kentucky, out in eastern Kentucky, just a place for folks to go and stay warm in these dangerous temperatures. Now, the Fayette County 
County Sheriff's Office also wants to remind folks out there that they are continuing their coat drive and at several Republic Bank locations here in Lexington they will be collecting coats today at Andover, the Chevy Chase area along the uh, Harrisburg Road area and also at Tate's Creek. So just keep that in mind. If you have an extra coat, you want to give it to somebody, that would be a great option. You can contact the Sheriff's Office for more information on that. I'm live in Lexington out in the cold. I'm meteorologist Jim Caldwell. And we appreciate it, Jim. Let's Thank you. Let's hope they let him in that warming center pretty soon. He <laughs> well, looks pretty miserable. Sure they will between his uh, shots. All right, our time is 635, and the frigid temperatures are also taking a toll on emergency responders who have to work around the clock. And Whitney Wetzel is live to explain how they prepare. She's also live for us outside in the cold. Good morning, everyone. These bitter cold temperatures are making things pretty tough for emergency responders. Luckily, though, Lexington police say that tonight has been a pretty quiet night so far. They've only had to take one person to a local warming shelter. Other than that, the streets have been pretty quiet and bare because of these frigid temperatures. However, officers are going around looking for people who are out in the cold who need to get into a warm place to stay. But this bitter cold creates tough working conditions, as you can imagine, for police, firefighters, and other emergency responders. Police say they have to layer up because they just don't know what types of situations they'll end up having to deal with overnight. But it is certainly something that they have to prepare for. We, we just uh, dress warmly. We have plenty of equipment to stay warm. Now, officers also want to remind people that if you do see anyone out on the streets that looks that looks like they need some help or a warm place to go, give police a call because they can help those people find some shelter. Live in Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. All right, thanks, Whitney. Try to stay warm out there. Do not forget about your pets on days like this. In Lexington, a city ordinance requires that pets be brought inside during extreme cold weather. Animal Control says it gets many calls when temperatures drop. Even animals who are meant to be out in the cold weather should not stay outside for too long. If your pets for some reason have to be outside, uh, proper bedding could help keep them warm, but really you are not suggested to keep any of these animals outside. Animal Control says in some cases, pets can actually be removed from the home if they have been left outside too long. Stay with WKYT for continuing coverage of this Arctic blast. You can always find updated closings, delays, and weather information on WKYT.com. The time is now 637 on WKYT this morning. In other news, we're tracking a crime alert as police in Pulaski County are searching for a bank robber. Police say this man robbed the first and farmer's bank yesterday in Burnside. Police say he used a weapon and no one was hurt in the situation. Police are right now looking for a 13-year-old Ohio girl who they think could be with a Richmond man. Police say Caitlin Walters has not been seen since December 30th. Police think she could be with 27-year-old Walter Dunn of Richmond. He has been named a person of interest in the case. Richmond police searched Dunn's home this week. They said it looked to be abandoned. The FBI says investigators found Dunn's car yesterday in Knoxville, Tennessee, but the Kentucky license plate on it had been removed. The Montgomery County Board of Education has voted not to renew the superintendent's contract. The Mount Sterling Advocate reports the board has suspended Josh Powell with pay. Powell drew criticism last year for the district's policy that did not allow critical comments during school board meetings. Police arrested a burglary suspect after a high-speed chase in central Kentucky. Bergen police arrested Thomas Combs at his home. Police say they found him hiding under insulation in the attic. Earlier this week, police say Combs led them on a chase in Mercer County. They think he broke into a home and stole jewelry before running from police. Police are asking for your help catching a couple of thieves. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office says this truck, seen here, may have been involved in the Christmas Eve theft of heating and air units. I believe we have that photo for you. Deputies say two men stole a couple of units and some copper. Looks like we don't have that photo for you. Sorry about that. A building in downtown Lexington was damaged after a crash. It happened last night at the corner of North Broadway and West 2nd Street. Police think a car ran a red light, hit another car, and forced it into the building. No one was hurt in the damage. To the building is minor. Police. 
Here we go now. Authorities in Paris, France are searching for two brothers in connection to a deadly attack on a French satirical newspaper known for its parodies of Islamic fundamentalists. The Associated Press reports a third suspect turned himself in. Police think all three were behind yesterday's massacre at the Paris offices of Charlie Hebdo. Twelve people were killed, including the paper's editor and three cartoonists, when the masked gunmen stormed the building and opened fire inside. Well, divers are working to recover more wreckage of the Air Asia jet in the Java Sea. Search and rescue teams have identified the tail of the plane on the seabed near the location where the plane lost contact. The tail contains the cockpit voice and data recorders, and hope is that the black boxes will provide clues into what caused the crash that killed 162 people late last month. And the happiest place on earth is leaving guests under the weather. Nine cases of the measles have been linked to two Disney theme parks in California. Officials say seven Californians and two people in Utah who visited Disneyland or Disney California Adventure last month have confirmed cases. Three more California residents are suspected of having measles. Well, if you were doing something illegal, wearing it as a fashion statement may not be a good idea. Right. Case in point, this Florida man, he was busted for allegedly having meth and pot on him inside a Kmart store earlier in the week. At the time of the arrest, he was wearing a T-shirt that included the phrase, I have drugs, printed on it. Police say it wasn't the shirt that got him in trouble at first, but that did start to make some people suspicious and somebody uh, contacted police. Usually so, we would say he did everything short of wearing a sign on his back, but I guess he, he wore it on his shirt. He actually wore a sign, yeah. <laughs> well, in our nation's capital, a blast of snow tied up traffic, but it also made for a fun snow day for some. Yeah, right. A, a giant panda there, Bayo Bayo, experienced snow for the very first time. Her handlers at the Smithsonian National Zoo allowed the 16-month-old cub to frolic around in the mm. snow. As you can see, she had a lot of fun with it there. So uh, that is some good video. There are some ways to appreciate the the, the winter time. <laughs> that will cheer you up, make you chuckle a little bit on this cold, cold morning. Yeah, it's 6:42 our time on WKYT this morning. Let's get a check of traffic and see what's happening on the roads. Take a look out there right now, and uh, we'll uh, try to get a live camera up for you in just a second. But we have no reports of any uh, major problems this morning. Of course, with the Fayette County schools closed, uh, that is uh, lightening up traffic and. Uh, Everybody moving along okay this morning. Uh, there's our live drive look right now showing uh, most everywhere moving along fine. Now, they are going to return to that blasting work out at uh, Lee's Town on yeah. the Circle. So they uh, have continued with a lot of so construction uh, over there. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, looks good. More news coming up on WKYT on this cold Thursday morning. Believe it or not, some people still have to walk to get to where they need to go, even in these sub zero temperatures. We'll show you how one city tried to make that walk a little bit warmer. We'll tell you where this is. Is coming up. And we're looking at current wind chills, sub zero wind chills in a few locations, but honestly, most of us are actually above zero out and about. We'll talk much more on this forecast coming up.